All right, so I'm gonna have to apologize to the world for how incredibly messy this is, but I was so excited I couldn't resist. Um, this video is to show you how to make and cut your own threads of your own desired pitch um, and depth and size and all that good stuff. Um, this is finally the finished result, my golden nut, you could say, that I'm gonna be using Really deep, really beautiful threads. It's all in pine. I, I'm a woodworker on a budget, so I'm using a lot of softwood. Um, <laughs> wood that I just have floating around just for fun to see if I can do this. Um, anyway, so I made a really advanced jig to be able to do this. Um, and here it is, partially disassembled. This is just a router table, and I took a stinking one inch, uh, one inch, uh, one of these spade bits. I literally took a diamond uh, blade grinder from my uh, Dremel tool and a file among other things to cut it down to this shape. Um, it's exactly 90 degrees and um, I even uh, you know clearanced it a little bit too. I mean, it's really hard to see with this camera but so here's that. Um, my router has incredibly high RPMs, it's not variable, so I have a Variac hooked up to it, and I only have it going at 30% because I'm afraid to go any higher at this point. Anyway, so I have this mounted to the table with bolts going through on each side. It's quite sturdy for one, only one bolt. Um, I have some clearance here, so this can just slide really nice. Oh, you, it's not going to do that now because I have this unscrewed all the way. <clears throat> but into here and here. I have everything labeled for L's for left and R for right for very good reason. Um, so the magic happens inside here. See what that is, what's going on here is this are two pieces of wood cut at a very specific angle. I did some math over here and determined that for the pitch that I wanted it was 85.5 degrees or um, 3.30 seconds of an inch for every one inch. Um, and there's my triangle graph of exactly the pitch that I want to work with. Um, okay, so I cut those two pieces and I laid them one, one over each other. I mean, you can't see this at all. I don't have it dismantled at all. But there's a razor blade in there that you would normally use for a... Uh, I don't know where that's at. Here it is. One of these guys. Um, the blade is really thick, really uh, strong, and really sharp, which is exactly what you need. You can't use a flimsy blade. I tried using... Those blades, the blue ones and stuff, and that didn't work out at all. Um, so, they were too flimsy. Um, okay, so I, what I did is, once I had that pitch, I, I actually turned this piece of pine. It was a block. I have a really cool jig that I got off Izzy um, that I made. Uh, it's on in pieces, too. But I turned out my table saw to make this one-inch dowel. You can see the top isn't even finished because I didn't want to run my blade into the nuts and bolts I had working in there. Anyway, um, so once you have this, you can then push it through like I have two um two holes drilled one on one on this side of the board one on this side it's really the same board I just cut it in half to create more space because I didn't want to um I wanted less jiggle as it goes left to right even though it was really tight at first over time pine is a softwood weakens or loosens up and it gets a little too sloppy for my taste it turns out that wasn't enough anyway but you just literally screw this whatever pitch you'd want well you actually have to angle this for the pitch that you want try one right-handed uh screw so I turned it in there and it actually creates some really even threads. Um, that was my fault. The problem with this situation is if you put too much pressure forward or backward while you're doing this, it will start cutting new threads again and that's bad because you don't you want it to keep running the same threads over and over again. Uh, this is just to cut the thread, the the, the nut essentially. Because once you have the nut, it's actually quite simple to make the, the threaded rod. Um, I saw some excellent videos about how to do that. But you have to have the nut first. Um, Anyway, so once you have this mount inside here, I have these bracers that I cut out that is going to uh, that push against this on both sides of it once it's vertical inside here um, because there was just too much slot on the top and it was ca causing me, I was having oval holes and stuff and that was working out. Um, previous attempts over here, um, you can see this far left hole is completely oval and I could not quite figure out, I apparently had some more slop in there than I expected. So anyway, um, hopefully this gives you some good ideas. Uh, nothing here is drawn out in CAD or anything. How I got everything so tight to actually work and not be sloppy is I used 
a lot of rods and holes that fit very tightly together in order to make things be straight. And you use the level to make sure that you know everything was, was good when I button it down. I have a lot of uh, slots to be able to move it left and right if I want to increase or decrease the depth of the cut. Uh, make sure this rod is centered between the two points first, but I can have some adjustments to go left or right um, to create a further depth of cut. In fact, I did you know, my initial cut on this one was way too shallow. I could tell by the way it sounded. In fact, only one side was cutting, which is kind of weird. I thought I was going to have some more wobble, but it turned out really well. Really excited about that. I have, <laughs> the problem with this is I have no idea how deep that those threads are. Um, so I have no idea exactly how I'm going to do that. This rod here that I have cut from uh, something I got from Grizzly. I hate those stupid things. The whole reason I started this project was because uh, you get these things, they thread one inch dowels, um, just put it in here and turn. There's a blade in there and the blade chipped within a week and uh, I got a refund for it, but I just, I think this is a terrible design. Uh, it's just, it would work for hardwoods decently, softwoods it's terrible. I, I only think I kept a couple, couple examples. Here's one softwood situation. It's really just ground up really dirty and I just hate it. So I want to be able to do it. And I figured a cutting blade would be much cleaner as you can tell. Very clean, very nice. Um, I want to do the same thing with the uh, threaded rod. But um, anyway, so I wanted to do it all myself because I want to not only use one inch rod, I want to get up to three inch rod and I'll turn it myself on the table saw, take two, two two by fours, glue them together, turn them on the table saw, get a good three inch rod going on, a dowel, and then I'm going to tap a nut that's going to be over three inches uh, wide the id obviously is gonna be less um and then i will um have to cut the three inch rod so i can use it for vices i want to make a big workbench and combine all my working tools into one big workbench and lots of vices and stuff because i just have a lot of limited space in my garage so um problem solving as best i can if you have any questions um or any ideas for me feel free to put any of those below in the comments anyway Thank you very much.